dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs neuro med it's an e learning program entitled corona radiata a series of neuro anatomy lectures called it as lockdown lectures or study at home videos because right now we are going through this covid pandemic we are teaching from home and these videos are being specifically prepared as part of our neuro anatomy curriculum i hope this will fulfill the requirements of the theory classes at least to some extent and we hope to see our students back to the practical classes as early as possible the topic that we are going to cover is the ventricles of the brain part 7 of this series is the fourth ventricle there is also a small complement of mcqs and corresponding answer discussions in this video i am dr bala subramanian from the anatomy department a professor in the anatomy department st john's medical college bangalore india let's have a first look at some of the mcqs image based mcqs mcq number 1 here is a sagittal section of the cerebrum and brain stem cerebellum is also there there is a flashing arrow identify that structure there are options here listed out which is the correct answer next another flashing arrow pointing to a particular structure mcq number 2 what is this pointed structure next here we have encircled a particular area in the floor of the fourth ventricle what is that next the next two mcqs are related to cranial nerve nucleus here is a flashing arrow pointing to something some triangular area deep to it there is a nucleus which nucleus is this which cranial nerve nucleus is this and lastly another area dotted red white circle right underneath this prominent landmark in the floor of the fourth ventricle there is a nucleus of a cranial nerve which cranial nerve is this now let's go to the video and at the end of the video we will have a re look at these mcqs now here is a mid sagittal section of the cerebrum cerebellum and adjacent brain stem the four ventricles are pointed out the third ventricle and the lateral ventricles are shown to whatever extent is visible in this view in the cerebral area and in a dotted line red white dotted uh, circle is shown the fourth ventricle next in the vicinity of the fourth ventricle let's reconfirm posteriorly the cerebellum and right anteriorly pons and the medulla oblongata also note that the cavity this cavity the fourth ventricle communicates superiorly with the uh, through the midbrain to the third ventricle and that line of that uh, canal of communication is the cerebral aqueduct there is a roof like tent for this uh, ventricle fourth ventricle 
it has two components a superior medullary velum and an inferior medullary velum these are shown here uh, in this photograph next the floor of this ventricle is best to see in from a posterior view ideally what we have to do is we need to cut off a huge wedge of the cerebellum remove it and then this area comes to view as the cerebellum is, is wedged out that part the midline and the para uh, median areas of the cerebellum are wedged out the superior and the inferior medullary vein also gets removed or we can push it aside now in this case finally we have the floor and this floor is also known as the rhomboid fossa i repeat rhomboid fossa now it is appropriate that we identify the which part of it is pons and which part of it is the medulla now we will add that to the uh, photograph next these are the four corners of the rhomboid fossa these are the four corners of the rhomboid fossa. this is helpful later on when we have to talk of some important uh, uh, recesses etc next emerging from the midline on either sides there is a spray of uh, fibers white fibers called the striae medullaris these are nothing but the posterior external arcuate fibers or the posterior external arcuate tract now let's identify some key landmarks in the fourth of the four. remember this is a very very common a uh, short note question in the theory paper it can be asked in viva and practicals also the central line you see in the sagittal region sagittal region is the median sulcus on either sides of the median sulcus is an elevation we will call it the median eminence now there is a flashing dotted line coming up that's actually a lateral to the median eminence now that is the sulcus limitans it's the lateral boundary of the median eminence you see now this is a long uh, sulcus it's also there superiorly i have shown the superior part only on one half because the other half there is another label uh, running but it is there on both sides now when you look at the lower part of the sulcus limitans it has at it is tipped at either ends by the superior and the inferior fovea superior and inferior fovea and lateral uh, here is the flashing uh, circles highlighting the superior fovea the area lateral to the uh, sulcus limitans the lower part is the vestibular area is the vestibular area next let's go up again using the sulcus limitans as a, as a as a landmark we can identify one more structure we'll come to that a little later but before that look at that flashing dotted circle that's an important landmark called the facial colliculus I repeat facial colliculus deep to it is the abducent nucleus and how is it related to the facial nerve the fibers of the facial nerve due to a concept called a neurobiotaxis they go backwards wind around the abducens nerve sixth cranial nerve and then uh, emerge out now this looping behind the uh, abducens raises a elevation seen well in the floor of the fourth ventricle and we call that as facial colliculus that means although the colliculus is called the facial colliculus the nucleus underneath is the abducent nucleus next let's go to that area i told you the cranial end of this uh, sulcus limitans there is a pigmented area melanin rich area called locus ceruleus it contains the nucleus of the same name there is a melanin pigmentation as a result it shows bluish gray appearance in a fresh brain section this bluish 
tinge is very well seen. This is a pigmented area. Next, lower down, when the sulcus limitans is traced down, the inferior fovea expands to cover a triangle called the vagal triangle. Cover the vagal triangle. Medial to the vagal triangle, the extension of the median eminence is the hypoglossal triangle. That means deep to these two are respectively the hypoglossal nucleus and the vagal nucleus. Next, there are forming the infralateral boundary, the gracile tubercle and the cuneate tubercle are important landmarks uh, in this uh, region. Next, there is a area marked in red white dotted line it looks like the nib of a pen therefore it is just a area of reference uh, we are not going to attribute any functionality importance to it it just uh, a, a passing reference we call this as calamus scriptorius i repeat calamus scriptorius because it looks like the um, pen nib next the tip of this area calamus scriptorius the lower tip is the obex obex is a junction where that fourth ventricle the cavity ends and the canal central canal of the spinal cord begins tenia is basically a pia ependymal uh, ridge which runs laterally uh, up to the foramen of Lushka, which we will discuss uh, in, in the next few slides. Next, there is another important area, generally not very well seen, but uh, locally identified here as inferolateral to the uh, vagal triangle. That area is called the area post trema. There is something very particular about this. Although it is not that well seen, it is emphasized in all discussions. This area of postrema does not have blood brain barrier. Something very important to note. Plus, two centers, the vomiting center and the uh, respiratory center, are deep to it. That's what I mentioned. I just added a note there. Next. We will try to finish up with a few leftover items that can be easily identified. I told you, superior medullary velum forms the cranial part of the tent-like roof. Here, we have reflected a small bit of it is there between the two superior cerebellar peduncles. Now, that's the superior cerebellar peduncle. It runs from the midbrain into the cerebellum. And here, it forms the uh, lateral edge of the uh, roof of this um, fourth ventricle. On this side, the superior medullary velum has been turned aside. It's a thin uh, tent sheet. Similarly, you can you can see just like the superior cerebellar peduncle, you can also see supralateral to the gracile and the uh, cuneate nucleus, which I showed you earlier, is another huge ridge from the uh, medulla oblongata running towards the cerebellum. That's the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Now being called the fourth ventricle this ventricle like the other two ventricles uh, are also is also associated with secretion of csf that's why not only secretes it makes sure that this csf secretion reaches out into the uh, subarachnoid space in fact uh, this communication is there only in this ventricle it is not there, the direct communication with the subarachnoids is not there in the third ventricle or in the lateral ventricle. Therefore, this is something very, very important. Now, the marked area, the circle, white, red, da circle, dash circles, actually points the area where the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle extends. And at the tip of this recess is located the foramen of Lushka. This pair 
of foramina are very very important in uh, discharging the CSF out into the um, uh, subarachnoid space. Likewise, likewise, in the midline, in the inferior component of the roof of this tent-like uh, uh, area, that is precisely in the inferior medullary velum, is a is a large gap or an aperture. Uh, this is the foramen of Majendi. Foramen of Majendi. It's a fairly large triangle, generally well seen uh, in a posterior view of the uh, brainstem with uh, some amount of uh, uh, superior uh, pushing of uh, the uh, cerebellar lobes. This also, because it communicates, it communicates with the uh, cerebellomedullary stern uh, and by that communication it uh, discharges the CSF into the subarachnoid space. Now, to secrete the cerebrospinal fluid, it's a, filter, it's a filtered um, blood. So many components are removed, so many components are added that your biochemistry will tell you. But then ultimately, choroid plexus is a CSF secreting lump of vascular loops fed by the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Now, it's time that post discussion we revisit the questions with a, a focus on the answer. FQ number one, the flashing arrow is the superior medullary velum. Right answer is C. Next, FQ number two, the pointed structure is superior cerebellar peduncle. MCQ number 3, the answer is superior fovea. Superior fovea. Next, MCQ number 4, the correct answer is hypoglossal triangle and the hypoglossal nucleus. Answer is D. Last one, while it is uh, quite, um, uh, I would say, compelling to consider C as the correct answer, the actual answer for the reasons given in the discussion of this video, the actual answer is uh, B, namely the cranial nerve 6, abducent nerve nucleus. That was a brief overview of the fourth ventricle with a few image based MCQs added. And I'm sure this will be of some use to the students when they take up the entrance exams uh, in, in at a future date. You will have some feedback. Here is my uh, email ID. Uh, you can write to me on this ID or better still, post your feedback in the blog area immediately below the YouTube video. Thank you for your patient hearing.